understand these are some of the people in the program yeah. who, who have been killed. In yes, this is from our team. He was teaching the children mm. about uh, how to rescue uh, another one and uh, he was killed. Mm. And unfortunately this one, uh, this child was killed. How, how old is he? Six it seemed young. to be like uh, five, five years, or, yeah. six years. And this? Yeah. He also is, very young. Yeah. And here, Peter, mm. they are he, like brother and sister. And brothers and yeah. sisters. Yeah. And if you watch the uh, videos and an interview, they were talking about how they are happy, how they are yes, spent amazing that. time in Nippers program. And they are talking, we like to come to Australia in the f next year or something like that. And uh, unfortunately, we were shocked that they were killed. And... Um, and um, this is, these stories refute the Israeli claims that they are fighting against Hamas. It's, they, are, they are killing children and killing the civilians. And this is a truth. This is a uh, photographer. Is this yeah, some because, of the photographs that you yeah, because we have, have a, shared? Yeah, we have a team. This team mm. was, uh, Mohammed was is the leader of this team. And we have some people work with him. Mm. And he is working with us mm. for taking photos, videos. And um, he took these videos that I showed you. Ah. Mm. But um, I asked Mohammed, do you know how many people were killed? He told, until now, I, I know that this man was killed in this genocide by Israel occupation, and also the children. Mm. And, and uh, yeah, in this picture, Safa, this is, this is yeah manager. one of the team. Yeah, yeah, one of the team also killed. And your dad? Yeah, my father. Yes. Was going nearly every week when they have nippers go. He was happy because he was um, working as a teacher for 43 years in United Nations school. And he told me this is amazing, good experience. And he, we, uh, the team make interview with him and he was talking about the, the, um, the benefit from this mm. project. And he said, next year I hope to come and to see mm. we as a team started to build that surfing club. Unfortunately, he was killed. See him. I haven't seen him for... 10 years and um, it's terrible. Yeah, I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, unfortunately. And um, also, my father was born, was survived from the Nakba yeah. in 1948 and escaped with his family from historical Palestine. And during his escaping, his, his mother passed away because lack of food, the same, and his sister. And unfortunately, he was born in Nakba and killed in genocide mm. and he was he was you can say from workers class because mm. when his when he lost his um, father sorry his mother and um, and his family he started to work he was working for 60 years as uh, working selling anything in order to support his family and then he built his house after working hard and then Israel Bildor destroyed his house. Yes, I think they have. This is uh, the photos of yeah, yeah, yeah. your, they your destroy, family home. Yeah, they destroyed this house. And he told me, I remember last, like when I was calling him, he told me they destroyed the house, but I don't want to leave again. I don't like, want to leave again. I built this house after working 60 mm. years. And then they came from, from Europe or from Russia and invade Gaza again and destroy my house. Why I should leave? Mm -hmm. This is my house. I can't leave. And then we discovered his saving was stolen. He has some savings, mm -hmm. but we didn't find this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my mother living here in this. She still is still. But we some of my friends, of neighbors, telling her you can stay during the day, mm -hmm. but on night you should sleep with the neighbors. With the neighbors, yeah. And she is alone because mm. my mother was like um, during the war before she lost his her family. She lived with my father, my brother Ihab, and uh, his family. He has four children, and his wife and father-in-law, all of them killed. And my mother is still alone, and we can't be able to 
to help her. Even we can't support her. We can't. No, it's, no, it's not easy to, to support her, to send money for her. And some people told me, you are lucky that you found someone to bury your father. And I don't know why. They told me, otherwise your mom will be die with that because lack of food and perhaps the wild dogs comes and eat your father. So you are lucky. I told him, oh, I am lucky. Yes, you are lucky. This but, is what they, you, they told they, me. They, in could, they could not bury your father in the cemetery. No, right? they couldn't because my, my friend told me, Shamikh, it's not easy to bury your father in cemetery. So I buried him in my in backyard, in my backyard. And this is what I did. And uh, he told me, I remember the few days before your father passed away, he wasn't able to breathe and no hospitals. He, I think water in his heart and he, it is important to bring oxygen, but mm. it's not easy to bring oxygen. And then he like passed away as he couldn't able to breathe. He told me, no, I couldn't bring medicine because he should take medicine, take, uh, like all um, like good food, water. He didn't have all this mm. stuff when he passed away. It's terrible. And it's unfortunately, terrible. Uh, the Australian government here, they uh, give him visa, but they told me we can't help him to leave the borders. I told them why, and they told me because your father is not from immediate family. I told them that's not accurate. Who is immediate family? Yeah. My parents' immediate family. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, if they intervene, because they have ability to intervene, to coordinate with the Egyptian authority and to give me opportunity to help him to come to Australia. But he, they didn't do that. And um, that's terrible. Despite I called the prime minister, I, me I sent messages. I have all these messages. I sent emails to member of parliament and some ministers. And no one helped me in, in giving and, and to coordinate with Egyptian authority or to do something, despite they did that with others, other people. Because they said, if your wife or daughter, this immediate family. But according to the law, uh, immediate family, your parents are a part of your immediate family. It's a shocking story. Yeah. And um, now I don't know what can I do when I come back to Gaza now. I want to rebuild the house. I want to take my mother for to hospital. She is sick. She is old, and I will still searching to to know where the bodies of my family yeah. may have and uh, his wife and his children. Mm -hmm. People told me, some people told me, the Israeli, air, uh, the Israeli bombed Israel bombed his um, house and they are under the rubble. Mm. So, but I told them how we can make sure we want to know where are their bodies. I remember when my father passed away, my friend told me that I was calling your brother Ihab and sent him messages, please come and come and your father passed away. He told me, I noticed that he see the messages, but he don't, didn't reply. Mm. He didn't reply him. So we were, we surprised. Then we discovered after the people told us they bombed his house, the Israeli bombed his house, then he was alive, but he couldn't able to, he was alive and then he passed away. Because uh, two steps, like people sometimes be alive when they mm. destroy the house, but they can't, mm. like big grave. Mm. And also not only my brother and also all of my relatives, like uh, cousins, the, and yeah, yeah, they, like uh, uncles, my aunt, his, his husband were killed under the rebels. Her, uh, her sons, five of her sons, killed, and um, yeah. So, and also um, another one from my relatives also killed. Until now, we the news don't. Uh, um, they cover everything mm. because after this genocide a lot of stories mm. and tragic stories will happen. Well, my heart goes to you and your family. <laughs>